Welcome to the Nashville Parthenons Create Series, a way to learn as we create by using the Parthenons architecture and the museum's collection as our inspiration. In this session, we will be exploring negative space in compositions using Metapiece. You are probably already familiar with comics and graphic novels. Have you ever noticed the format they use to tell the story? The images and text are usually divided into sections. This technique for storytelling goes back at least 5,000 years to ancient Mesopotamia. It can even be seen on the Nashville Parthenon. Look closely at the entablature. See those square panels with figures? Those are called metopes. They may look small from the ground, but are actually over four feet tall. The ancient Parthenon in Athens had 92 metopes on its exterior. On each side of the temple, the metopes told a different story. The Nashville Parthenon also has 92 metopes. The metopes on the Nashville Parthenon are based on the ancient Athenian Parthenon's metopes along the southern side, since those are the best preserved. This portion of the metopes depicts the battle between the centaurs and the lapiths. Artist George Solonet and his assistant created these metopes in the 1920s. When drawing, we are often so focused on the person, the animal, or the tree that we often forget to draw the space around it. You may have heard an art teacher who insisted that you use the whole page because many times whatever we draw is just floating in empty space. This empty space is what artists call negative space, while the person, animal, or tree is called the positive space. Compositions that seem incredibly challenging can often be made a little bit easier by drawing the negative space instead of the positive space. It may seem a little backwards, but by drawing the negative space, challenging compositions can be made a little bit easier. Focusing on the negative space can help improve your proportions for shapes and spaces in a composition. By using negative space well, you can create interesting compositions and lead the viewer's eye to important areas within the picture. One of the main themes in Greek art that can be seen at the Parthenon is order over chaos. The Greeks saw themselves as very orderly and rational, while the rest of the world was very chaotic and uncivilized. In the story of the Lapiths versus the Centaurs, the Greeks identify with the Lapiths. They are shown as very calm and reasonable, while the Centaurs are shown as chaotic and uncivilized, crashing a wedding celebration. When you look at this composition, Notice the diagonals used for the centaur. Diagonals are often used to convey a sense of movement and unbalance. The Lapith woman, who the centaur is trying to abduct, looks rather calm and balanced by comparison. For this session, you will need a pencil, an eraser, and the printed images of the Parthenon's metopes. Look for a link to these printable images in the description below. The ancient metopes would have been brightly colored with encaustic paint, a blend of pigment and wax. The metopes at the Nashville Parthenon only have color on the background, not on the sculptures, which will be great for our study of negative space. The challenge for this drawing will be to only draw the empty spaces. You won't have to worry about drawing faces or other details, unless you would like to add those in later. You can make your own square, either larger or smaller, or you can use the square included in our printable images. Let's start by adding our border along the lower edge. Now I'll make the border to the left.
The border at the top is interrupted by the head of the figure to the left. Instead of drawing the woman's face, we're going to try to draw the shape that's made by the borders, her arm, her neck, and her face. Try to identify the center of each borderline to help with the placement. Here, I'm trying to figure out if the elbow is halfway along the upper line or a little to the right. How do we know where to put the hand? Does it line up with the shoulder? Look at what you've already drawn to find the position of new things. It's okay to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to move something and to try again. Now we're trying to get the space in between her scarf and the wall. Look at the space as its own shape. Sometimes it helps to think of what the shape resembles, like a piece of pizza, or a flower petal, or a sock puppet, or whatever. Look at the distance. How does her foot line up with the edge of her scarf? Be careful with her leg. It's not a truly straight line. Look for all the subtle changes of the line, whether it curves out or in. Now for the next section. I will outline the shapes so you can clearly see what I'm focusing on. Now let's draw the negative space between the scarf, her arm, and her side. It almost looks like the line of her upper arm, if it continued, would start our negative space. And the line that forms her leg, if it continued upward, would form the lower portion of our shape. So don't worry too much about details. Look at the shape, look at the angles, look at the length of the line. Let's move to the other side of her head. Try to get the line of her neck and of her hair. Does the place where her shoulder and her hand meet line up with her hair, or is it a little over to the right? Now let's get the tiniest pocket of negative space, that little gap between her waist and her scarf. How do we know where to put it? Look at how it lines up with what we've already drawn. Now for the next section. Remember to focus on the negative space. Look at this point, what does it line up with? Check your angles, make sure you aren't drawing a line too steep. Don't be afraid to erase something and start over. Now let's get this long strip of negative space between the two figures.
Be careful that you don't just start drawing a straight line. There are subtle angles to this line. My point was going in the wrong direction. How high do we want this to go? What does it line up with? Oh, my two lines don't match up. It's okay to erase and try it again. Let's draw the border along the right side. Look at the negative space to get the curve just right. Let's finish drawing our top border. As you add more shapes, you may realize that things aren't fitting together the way they should. It's okay to erase a section and move it over a little. This is part of getting better. Look at the angle. What direction does the line go? How far down does the line go? As you get multiple shapes in your drawing, look at how they align. It looks like my border is too wide. I'm going to have to fix that. Look at the point of the elbow. How does it line up with the inside of the elbow? Now for a curve. We can see it lines up over here. Look at what's the same height vertically, and look at how things line up horizontally. And it goes almost to the edge. Look at the angle as it heads back to the figure. Where does this corner line up? What does it mean? Almost done. This line shouldn't be here. I'm going to erase this line since it's part of the border. Ta-da! We finished our negative space composition. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you're the first to know about all the exciting things happening at the Nashville Park.